How are you, sir? Thank you so much for doing this. Big fan. Sure, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So let's just jump right into the transition. We're spending the month focusing on the transition of power between the Trump and Biden administration as he sets his cabinet. First of all, tell us, what does the Transportation Department do? So the Department of Transportation does what it sounds like, but also a lot of things you might not think about every day. I mean, the basic reason the department exists is to make sure that it's safe and efficient for people and goods to get around. That means things like the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, that's in charge of making sure that uh, air travel is safe, including running all of the air traffic control around the country. Uh, there's a part of the department that's in charge of making sure trucks and buses are safe. Another part of the department that deals with uh, uh, highways, another for pipelines and hazardous materials, our seaways, uh, and uh, pretty much every dimension you can imagine of how you get from point A to point B, whether it's a subway ride in a city or a plane trip across the world. But it's not just about making sure uh, that that fundamental mission uh, of safety is met. That's, that's the most important thing, but also making sure that we're investing for the future. So working with cities, working with states to make sure that we're improving our roads, that we have good trains in this country. Uh, pretty much anything that involves a person or, or a piece of material getting around, uh, chances are we have something to do with it in the Department of Transportation. Right. Uh, what are the main goals you hope to achieve as Transportation Secretary? Well, like I said, uh, you know, the bottom line is safety. So a successful time uh, as a, a Secretary of Transportation is a time when travel got safer, uh, uh, fewer uh, injuries and uh, and, and fatalities on our roads, uh, fewer crashes, uh, fewer problems, uh, uh, whether it's trains, planes, automobiles. But one of the reasons I'm really excited to be uh, named to this job now is we also have a historic opportunity to take transportation in our country to the next level. We have this huge challenge of climate change, right? We have to dramatically change so many things in this country uh, in the next few years in order to stop the worst effects of climate change. And there are some very exciting things that we could be doing in transportation to make that happen. I'll give you just one example, electric vehicles. So we know that we can change the, the way a lot of our vehicles operate. When they're electric, they're not putting out pollution. They're not contributing to climate change. And also there's a lot of health effects from that pollution, all of which we can do something about if we get more electric vehicles on the road. But in order for that to happen, there gotta be more places to charge them across the country. Otherwise people won't buy them. They'll be afraid to take a long trip uh, because uh, it's not as easy as filling up with gas. That's something we could act on. And so one example of a goal that, that I'm hoping we can deliver uh, is that the president has asked us to make sure there's a way to deliver half a million charging stations across the country. Uh, I wanna make sure that we get that done. There's a lot of work to be done around equity, fairness, racial justice. You know, maybe not a lot of people think about racial justice when you think about transportation, but if you just stop and look at our history, uh, you know, a lot of highways went through uh, largely black neighborhoods in the past, dividing them up. Uh, and we could be doing so much better with the investments we make in the future. Uh, the last thing I want to mention that's really important, jobs. So. We know that our economy is, is in trouble in a lot of ways, but if we make the right choices around transportation, uh, everything from where a subway goes in to uh, how we make sure that there's a strong uh, car industry making these electric vehicles in the future, that's going to create millions of jobs for the future. And I'm really excited to be part of that, uh, hopefully as secretary. Last week, I believe, was your hearing in front of about 26 senators. Can you walk us through what that experience is like a little bit? And did anything unexpected happen? Or was there a question that came from one of those senators that was a bit surprising? Yeah, so most jobs, you know, you go through an interview process and then eventually the boss, the most senior person makes a decision and then you've got the job. When you get named to the cabinet, it's almost the other way around. Uh, the, the president calling, or at the time he was the president-elect, calling to say he wanted me to be his transportation secretary, that's just the beginning of the process. Then you go to the Senate and before you even get the whole Senate to vote on you, you go before this committee. Uh, the committee is uh, Democrats and Republicans. They're from all over the country. They're asking all kinds of questions. Some of them are about their home states. Uh, the chair is a senator from Mississippi. He's concerned about rail service along the Gulf Coast. Uh, the ranking member of the committee, she's from Washington State, which is where Boeing is headquartered. And so aviation safety was one of the biggest things on her mind. But there are also things that, that cut across the different states or the different parts of the country they're from, uh, where uh, they, uh, they ask questions about, you know, how are we going to pay for all this? How are we going to make sure that uh, safety is met? How do we make sure that we have uh, those regulations 
that, that uh, the department's in charge of uh, be reasonable and, and something that, that uh, cities and states can work with. So it's just all kinds of questions. It kind of feels like a, like a final exam in a way because you get ready on all these issues and then you try to make sure that you're putting forward an answer that's, uh, that's honest uh, and that, uh, that, that's an answer that'll uh, hopefully motivate the, the, the senators to vote for you. Um, maybe the biggest surprise was a, a nice compliment from uh, Senator Tester, who is known for being a very no-nonsense kind of senator. But uh, he had some kind words about uh, how we were approaching the hearing and uh, made me feel like it was, a, it was a good day for us. You have put on a clinic on how a, a nominee should work and act. You haven't avoided the questions. You've been straightforward. And you know what the hell you're talking about. And that's really pretty damn refreshing. Uh, during your hearing, you talked about how misguided transportation policy can reinforce racial and economic inequality. Uh, can you give us an example of transportation reform that could help uplift underserved communities? Yeah. So uh, in addition to what I was mentioning earlier, you know, this history of highway projects, for example, you know, going right through neighborhoods. And so often they were uh, neighborhoods where uh, uh, the, the residents didn't have the political power, often black and brown neighborhoods to resist. Sometimes the opposite happened, which was no investment at all. You may have heard in some cities there's what's called food deserts. That's if you live in a neighborhood where there's not access to, let's say, a grocery store where you can get good, healthy food. There's also such a thing as a transportation or transit desert. Uh, and sometimes those really are in the desert in some uh, parts of our western states, especially tribal lands where the roads just aren't good enough. But sometimes it can be in the middle of one of our biggest cities. And if you don't have uh, a good, safe option, a bus or a subway uh, or even just a bike lane, uh, that lets you safely get around and you don't own a car, that's cutting you off from economic opportunity. And that makes economic and racial injustice worse. So that's the problem. But it also points to the solution. Uh, you know, the president wants to make big investments in transportation in uh, in this first year in office. If we target those investments in the right way, if we really pay attention to those neighborhoods, those those communities where people have been left out or left behind, uh, then this time around, we can actually be using transportation policy to make people better off, make it easier to get to where you're going, easier to get a job, uh, easier to thrive. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's how I think about transportation. Uh, you know, government doesn't decide uh, whether people are going to thrive or not single-handedly, but we can empower people to thrive. And that's what good transportation resources can do. So as transportation secretary, you will play a large part in the fight against COVID-19. How do we balance our need for mass transit, public safety, and travel during a time of a pandemic? So this is a huge challenge, uh, especially because it's such a big part of our economy. Uh, you know, millions of people work in areas that are connected to transit or, or travel, and uh, it's just been devastated by COVID-19. Of course, the best thing we can do for the economy is beat the virus. And transportation has a big role to play in helping make sure that happens. Uh, part of it's making sure that uh, travel is safe. So for example, uh, the president has instructed the departments, including transportation, uh, to do everything we can around things like mask mandates, making sure if you're on an airplane, you're wearing that mask. Uh, that actually makes it easier for the airline industry to get back on its feet too, because people will know that it's safe to travel. And then there are things like the logistics of getting these vaccines around, especially because they have to be stored in incredibly cold temperatures. Uh, I'm going to be looking at all the things that we can do to use the, the resources of the department to help get those vaccines out there, because the sooner we can get everybody vaccinated, the sooner we can do what we all want to do, uh, which is have our normal lives back. Uh, as your tenure begins, you're going to be facing a Congress that is obviously uh, fatigued when it comes to spending after passing multiple trillion dollar COVID relief packages. How will that impact your priorities uh, at the Transportation Department? Well, I think the fatigue I'm most worried about is, is not so much in Congress, but among the American people. I think we're all fatigued with having our lives turned upside down. And uh, a lot of people are really economically vulnerable at a point like this. So we've got to act. We've got to do something about that. And, uh, you know, the good news is when you make smart investments, actually pay for themselves. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, when we choose to have a good road network or a, a good transit system or a safe way to get around, 
um, that unlocks so much economic possibility that over the long run, it really does pay for itself. That's going to be the focus when I'm talking to members of Congress on both sides, encouraging them uh, to support these investments. And then, you know, our side of the bargain, if you're uh, a part of the government that has been trusted with a lot of taxpayer money in order to go do something, is to do it well, do it efficiently, and make sure that everyone's proud of how those dollars were used uh, and that everybody's proud of, of what we were able to create with them. The president has made it very clear that he expects all of us to uh, work on delivering a new climate vision. And it's going to take a whole of government approach. And certainly uh, DOT has a, a big part of this because I also think we have a unique window of opportunity to make those kinds of investments. You spoke about this a little bit earlier, but uh, in talking about President Biden's environmental policies, you said the Transportation Department has a large part to play. What are the biggest things that the Transportation Department can do to help affect climate change? So if you look at all of the things that are going into climate change, all of the parts of our economy that, that produce greenhouse gases right now that, that cause climate change, actually the biggest part of that is the transportation sector. Now, if, if that's the biggest part of the problem, that means transportation is also the biggest part of the solution. So I mentioned electric vehicles. That's a great example. And, and an example where, you know, it's a lot of U.S. automakers uh, that could be uh, leading the charge here, making the best electric vehicles in the world. Uh, there's a lot of other things we can do, too. Uh, for example, if we're working with cities to make sure that they plan their future in a way that's transit friendly, uh, maybe fewer people have to take car trips to begin with if we make them more walkable. We need, if we make sure uh, that there are uh, safer ways to get around on a bike, which is also uh, often a, a healthier way to get around. If we make sure we're supporting good investments in transit, right, buses, subways, uh, anything like that, that ultimately makes everything more sustainable. Airplanes are becoming more fuel efficient. We need to encourage that progress. Uh, shipping, we don't think about shipping as much as we think about cars when we're talking greenhouse gases, uh, but that's a big area too. And we've got to be working with, with the maritime industry uh, to get that done. So really, any anytime something moves around in this country, a person or a product, uh, it's an opportunity for us to think about how to make it more climate friendly. One other thing I'll mention on this point, trains. You know, uh, our counterparts in other countries uh, enjoy, frankly, a much higher standard in, in most developed countries of train uh, passenger train options than we do here in the United States. I think we might have a chance to change that. You know, President Biden famously is a big fan of Amtrak. He used to take it every day when he was a senator to get home in Delaware uh, and commute to Washington and do his job. Uh, and uh, I share that passion for passenger rail. Uh, I think we can do a lot if we come up with the, the will and the resources to make this a country where you have options to get around, whether it's driving, flying, uh, taking the train. And when people have those options, again, uh, that usually means a lot more economic opportunity, too. Sure. Uh, last question. Uh, so Mark and I, over the last couple of years, have been going to D.C. quite a bit doing these interviews. We met a lot of different people who had a lot of different jobs. And we would often ask what they felt the best job was uh, in politics. And, and more often than not, they said mayor. Absolutely. Uh, so, so our question to you is, what, what's the thing that you, as of right now, or that you think going forward will be the thing you miss most about being mayor? Oh, it, it's true. Mayor is a fantastic job. It's hard. It's demanding, but it's it's so rewarding. And, you know, one of my favorite parts about the job is that you, you don't really do it from behind a desk. I mean, I put in long hours in the office working with my team, trying to solve problems. But a, a lot of the time you're out in the community, you're listening, you're in the neighborhoods, you're with city workers trying to figure out what's going on. You're meeting groups, you're going to uh, churches and, and, and schools. And uh, I miss that, but I think there's a version of that, uh, especially once we turn the corner with COVID-19, that a good Secretary of Transportation will do as well. After all, uh, if you're in charge of, of thinking about transportation, uh, you probably ought to be on the move a lot to see things for yourself. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for that part of the job, especially as it becomes safer to do it later on this year. Mayor Pete, thank you so much for your time. Thank really you so much, sir. This was great. Good luck with the rest of the process.